LeBron, three seasons ago, after you beat Toronto, you told Cleveland.com that you didn't have anything left to prove, or you asked what you have left to prove. And I wanted to know if that's changed over the past three years. Did you feel you had something to prove, and why is this one so important for you? Um, I think, personally, thinking I had something to prove fuels me, and it fueled me. Um, over these last um, year and a half since my injury. It fueled me because um, no matter what I've done in my career up to this point, there's still a little rumblings of doubt or, you know, comparing me to, you know, the history of the game. And um, has he done this? Has he done that? You know, so um, having that in my head, having that in my mind, saying to myself, why not still have something to prove? I think it fuels me. LeBron, all the circumstances surrounding this one, being in Orlando, having four and a half month hiatus, away from family, everything going on in the country, how does that um, add context to this fourth ring versus the other three? I think um, they're all special in their own right. They all have their obstacles, things that went on throughout the course of the year, both on and off the floor. Um, but one is not less than the other. Because when you're able to put yourself in this position to be able to win a championship, the first thing you start, start to think about is how much work you've put in over the course of the year. Um, how much you've sacrificed, how much you've dedicated um, to the game and to your craft. That's always been the most fulfilling thing for me besides seeing my teammates as happy as they are, is being able to know that you can put the work in, literally trust the process, live about the process, and then see the results. And I think not only from a basketball player, but from everybody, whatever craft, whatever work space you're in, to be able to put the work in and live along the process and build along the process and then be able to see results, I think we all live for that moment. Okay, we're gonna go, Michael. Okay. You're gonna be everybody tonight. <laughs> uh, LeBron, could you sense that the, with the mental wear of the bubble that it was getting to other teams? And in the last few days, was there kind of a weird feeling of we're reaching not just possibly winning a championship, but reaching the end of this journey? Like, did that feel different even than the other title run? Um, to answer your first question, with so much going on inside the bubble and, and everything and us, you know, going into the unknown, um, it's, it's, it's kind of hard for me personally. Um, once I got inside here, I was saying, okay, this is my mission. You know, I want to win a championship since I'm here. So it's hard for me to kind of focus on other teams and what other players were feeling. Um, I didn't engage in that. I didn't look for it. I wanted to keep my energy in the right space. Um, and over the last <clears throat> couple of days, um, you definitely thought about it. You thought about just being here, how successful it is. And I commend Adam Silver in the NBA, Michelle Roberts, Chris Paul over at the NBPA, and so many people that had it to make this happen, to make this work. And I think we all can say from the social injustice conversations, the voter suppression, um, you know, police brutality, to have this platform and have our players be able to unite like that, um, it's something that you will miss. You will think back on it. Um, and I think one of the biggest things, um, not only besides the social injustice and all the things I mentioned, we had zero positive tests. We had zero positive tests for as long as we were here. 90 some days, um, 95 days maybe for myself. I had a little calendar, I was checking it off. But no, but on a serious note, no positive tests. That, that is, that's the next success for, for everybody um, that was involved. LeBron, what about this partnership that you have with Anthony makes it particularly special to you? <clears throat> I can't, I can't really explain it. There's just some certain things you, you just know um, in any type of relationship. 
you kind of just feel, you just know that vibe. You, you, you have that respect, you have that drive. And sometimes you can't, you can't explain what links you with somebody and then it's that organic. And sometimes you don't even try to explain it. Um, besides you guys ask me about my relationship with AD, the first thing I think about is the respect, the no ego, the challenging is each other. And we want each other to be better than actually ourselves. Like I want AD to be better than me. AD want me to be better than him every single night, every single day. And we challenge ourselves. And I think <clears throat> that's, I mean, a part of it. Hey, LeBron. Um. <laughs> Don't make me laugh. You finally got one. Huh? I got one. Um, with about three minutes left, you, you looked over and you saw Anthony sitting there, probably the realization of what you guys accomplished hitting him for the first time. I'm wondering, did, how much of that reminded you of 2012 for you? And, and, and what did that first title do for your career? And what can this do for AD moving forward? Yeah, it definitely reminded me of it. Um, just the uh, excitement. The, I can't believe this. <clears throat> um, I definitely saw myself 27 LeBron, 27 Anthony, or 27 AD. Um, I definitely saw myself in that. And what it did for me in my career, it basically let me know that the work that I put in on my craft um, and the way I play the game, how I was taught to play the game when I first picked up a basketball at eight years old, <clears throat> it's okay to play that way and be able to win. No matter how many people tell you, okay, you should maybe shoot more, you should maybe do this more, you know, you should maybe be like him more. It let me know that the way I play basketball and the way I was taught basketball is the right way to play it because you do see results. And then it just continued to boost your confidence. Not saying that Anthony, uh, AD doesn't already have confidence, but it takes it to another level. Ron, you, uh, you talk about how you can't focus on other teams and their bubble experience, but for you, outside looking in, it seemed like you were locked in from the beginning of the entire journey to now. But, I mean, I got to imagine you had your days off the court when it comes to the personal sacrifice, when it comes to keeping this group together. Is that the case where there are ups and downs? And, and as far as this celebration, I know it's different, but y'all are having fun. How different is, is just the championship feeling? Uh, to answer your first question, absolutely. I think you wouldn't be human if you didn't have ups and downs in the bubble. Times I was questioning myself, should I be here? Um, is this worth sacrificing my family? Um, <clears throat> so many things. I've never been without my family this long. Um, you know, and, and missing the days of, of my daughter being in kindergarten, even though it's through Zoom. It's her first year of kindergarten. Missing my son's uh, 16th birthday, which we all know is a big birthday if you have kids. You know, and seeing my middle child continue to grow and, and be the, who he is, and <clears throat> first of all, uh, big time shout out to the late great Steve Jobs, because without him, throughout this journey, and without his vision, those FaceTime calls wouldn't be possible. Um, so absolutely, I've had ups and, ups and downs throughout this whole journey, but for some odd reason, I was able to keep the main thing the main thing, and all the stuff that I talked about that I missed, they understood that too, so it, makes, it made it a lot easier for me. To answer your second question, um, it don't matter where it is. If you win a championship, a bubble, Miami, uh, you know, Golden State, it it doesn't matter. <laughs> when you when you get to this point, is it's, it's one of the greatest feelings in the world for a basketball player to be able to win at the highest level. <clears throat> Ron, three. You had three like difficult championships to, to come, you know, to get Cleveland historic three, one deficit historic. And now this situation right here, when you look at all three of those three in particular, is there, what are some similarities with just how difficult it was or does anyone or particularly this one, does it stand out for me? Those two? Well, I mean, I, I can't sit here and say that one is more challenging than the other or one is more difficult than another. I could just say that I've never won with this atmosphere, with this, none of us, we've never been a part of this. 
And, and if you've been here throughout the start, I mean, we got here July 9th. Our ball, our ball club got here July 9th. And it's October, what, I'm so, I don't even, October 11th now. So this was very challenging and difficult. And, and it played with your mind, it played with your body. You're away from some of the things that you're so accustomed to to make you be the professional that you are. Um, so this is right up there. And I, and I heard some rumblings for, from, from people that's not in the bubble. Oh, this, that you don't have to travel. There's, you know, whatever. The, people just doubting what goes on in here. Um, this is right up there, one of the greatest accomplishments I have. Okay, we'll take the last couple on your end. All right, thank you. Uh, Tanya, go ahead. Tanya? She fell asleep. She's in law school now, so she probably fell asleep. <laughs> studying all, right. all, she's studying gonna, all night. We're gonna hold on, Tanya, and um, see Bill Orm, please. Hey, LeBron. Uh, you know, when you when you signed with the Lakers, it was a really young team. Um, as a franchise, it probably felt a long ways away from this moment. Um, over the course of that first year, kind of magic stepping down and everything that went into kind of your start here, was there ever a moment where your mind wandered or you started to feel like maybe the hill would be too high or hard to climb to get back to this point uh, in L.A.? Or if not, how did you know or what gave you faith that you guys would get here? Um. What gave me faith is that um, Rob uh, Palinka told me that he'd do whatever it takes to make sure we become a winning uh, franchise once again. Obviously, championships are not promised, and, and I don't expect that. But he said he'd do whatever it takes to make this franchise, whatever personnel makes he needs to make, whatever changes we need to make, um, anything a part of the organization, this, he, he would do it because he wanted to win just as much, just as bad. <clears throat> and for me, being able to get Jeannie back to this point is something that, I, that fueled me as well. This is a historic franchise and to be a part of this is something that I'll be able to talk about and my, my grandkids and kids will be able to talk about that their papa or their dad played for the Los Angeles Lakers. It's like playing for the Yankees and winning. It's like playing, you know, for the Cowboys and winning a Super Bowl or, or, the, or the Patriots. It's like, you know, playing for the Red Sox. You know, so to be able to win with a historical franchise is something that you can never, no matter if your mind wavers away, you can always remember what you're doing it for. All right, we're going to try to so I'm talking back here, but I feel like the question's coming behind my head. So I just want to get a little bit more personal. That's okay. Sorry. Uh, thank you. All right, we're gonna try Tanya one more time. Tanya. Hello. Um, Hello, Tanya. <laughs> uh, I was gonna ask the question that you just got asked, so I, instead I'll go with you, you gave you and Jeannie shared a long hug um, right after as as the trophy presentation was being prepared. Did you say anything to her? Um, I don't want to. I don't want to lie to you. So I did, but. If, if Jeannie at some point would ever want to reveal what I said to her, that's, um, that's up to her. Um, it was just a, it's a special moment, and I know how special it was for her. So it was just in, a, in the words of, um, I'm proud to be a Laker. <clears throat> Good on mine. Thank you. Thank you, Rachel. Oh, God damn it. I almost had it. 